In today's video, I am going to be showing you how a voltage multiplying circuit works. In this case, I will be showing you a few different voltage doubling circuits. Before I get started, I want to show you a few things on the oscilloscope. This way it will make understanding what I'm about to show you a lot easier. For the demonstration, I'm going to be using the 16 volt AC, one and a quarter amp center tap transformer. Later on, I'm going to give you a demonstration using a microwave oven transformer, which has an output between 2000 and 2500 volts. We're going to be stepping that up to the 5000 plus. That is the voltage the magnetron would see once the voltage has been doubled. By using the microwave oven transformer, you'll see the difference between the 2000 to 2500 volt output coming off of the transformer itself. Then once the voltage doubling circuit is connected to the transformer, you're going to see the difference in the output. It will be over 5000 volts. What I'm going to do now is zoom in to the oscilloscope screen and point out a few things. This voltage you see right here, 19.27 is the open circuit voltage of the transformer. Now this is the average voltage. This is not the peak voltage. The peak voltage is the voltage from the center of the waveform all the way to the top peaks and to get that let me show you peak voltage right here would be peak voltage up. The peak voltage is 26.98 volts from the center line of the waveform to the peak on top. And the peak voltage down, which would be negative, which is a negative voltage, is 27.63 volts. The peak to peak voltage, which is from the highest voltage in the negative, which is down here, to the highest voltage of the positive, is going to be voltage up down 54.29 54.6 volts that's the full waveform now let me do one other thing let me get rid of I'm going to be placing a horizontal marker across here just ignore the voltage reading it's not going to be accurate The reason why it's showing 39 volts is because this line is just a marker and it's measuring from the bottom up. Each one of these divisions is 10 volts. So it's almost to the 40 volt line. That's why it's showing that. The reason why I wanted to put this line here is to be able to point out the positive parts of the waveform, which is all these points sticking up above that line, and the negative portion of the waveform, which is everything below that line. The full cycle starts at the line, goes positive, past the line, negative, and back up. That's one full cycle. So a half of a cycle would be the positive at the top or the negative at the bottom. So when I mention this later, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. When I say peak voltage, the peak voltage is from that center line all the way to the top peak. Remember your digital multimeter or analog meter when it measures the voltage for AC is going to give you an average voltage which is around 70 72 percent of that peak voltage so when I mention peak voltage it's going to be the voltage which I showed you earlier from the center line up which is as you can see 26.66 volts is the positive peak voltage you can see the little up arrow that means from the center line of the waveform to the top and I could do it again. Let's go negative. 27.63 would be the center line down to the bottom. Now that I just explained that to you, I'm going to move over to a couple of schematics, explain how they work, and then give you a few demonstrations. The first schematic that you're looking at is a very common one, which is used in microwave ovens. It's a half wave voltage doubler. The name of the circuit is called a Villard circuit. I hope I pronounced that right. How this one works, over here you have your high voltage transformer. Puts out an output of around 2500 volts. The high voltage wire leaving that transformer goes into a capacitor. Just like you see right here, this is the type, oil filled canister. 
with a 10 meg ohm resistor across the terminals. After the capacitor, you have a high voltage diode rated between 10K and 12KV. Right here is what it looks like. The circuit is designed to put out high voltage negative pulses, which will be two times the peak AC input voltage, which means that output would be around 5,000 volts or a little higher. The reason why we have negative pulses for the output is because of the direction the diode is facing. If the diode was flipped around, we would have positive pulses of high voltage. The only problem with this particular circuit is the ripple is extremely large because it's a pulsed output and there's no smoothing. How this works, the transformer puts out around 2,000 to 2,500 volts on a microwave oven. On the positive half cycle, those positive pulses will flow through the capacitor charging the capacitor to the peak voltage of the transformer, the positive peak voltage. The reason why that's allowed to happen is because on the positive half cycle, the diode is conducting, allowing the capacitor to be charged. Just like placing the diode in parallel across the transformer, it would charge up to a particular voltage. On the negative half cycle of the AC waveform, this diode here will no longer be conducting, to allow current to flow through it. You're going to have a negative voltage right here. And what's going to happen is you're going to have the voltage of the transformer combined with the voltage of this capacitor, which is charged up, to give you twice the voltage. So you have 2,500 here, 2,500 there. Both are in series to give you 5,000 volts. An easier way to put that would be like having one battery there and then you're taking the other one, which is the capacitor, which is charged up, and now you have both of these in series, creating twice the voltage. Before I move on to the next circuit, I'm going to give you a quick demo of this one using the scope. The peak voltage from this transformer before connecting the voltage doubling circuit was around 27 volts. I have one lead of the transformer. The black is the center tap right here, it's not used. I have one lead going to the capacitor, the red wire here goes over to the diode, the anode, and the other side, the cathode, connects to the other side of the winding from this transformer. The voltage reading is taken from the cathode and the top of the diode, the anode. Alright, you're looking at the output. You can see a negative 55.9 volts. That's twice what it was before. This part right here across the top would be the center line of the full AC waveform and you notice you're only getting all the negative peaks. If I turn the diode around, you're going to see the waveform flip up and have positive peaks. Now you can see the waveform flipped around, it's now above that line, you're getting all the positive half cycles. 53.9 volts positive. Now we're going to go on to the next circuit. All right, this circuit here is a modified version, an improved version of the previous microwave circuit I just showed you. The name, I'm not positive, it could be Greniker or Greiniker. That's who designed the circuit. It's a half wave circuit. You're going to have the exact same thing, an output which is two times the AC input peak voltage and a lot less ripple. The circuit is just like the microwave one with the only addition, the extra diode here, and the extra capacitor for smoothing. The purpose of this diode is to make sure only negative pulses can pass and positive pulses are forced to go through this diode to charge the capacitor. Of course if you wanted a positive output you would reverse the direction of this diode and that diode as well and flip the capacitor around so positive is here, negative is there. Now we're going to take a look at this circuit on the scope as well. Alright, we have the other circuit now connected. The scope is connected as well. You can see the extra diode added here and the extra capacitor added here. Now let's take a look at the scope and see what it has done for the output. With the previous microwave oven voltage doubler circuit, we had a bunch of negative peaks pointing down very ripply. You can see there's just a little bit of ripple in that line. 
nothing like before with all of the negative peaks. Now we're going to take a look at the last circuit. The last voltage doubling circuit we're going to be taking a look at is a full wave type. You have your AC input, the positive part of the waveform will go into the two diodes, the positive part will go up through this diode because it's conducting to charge this capacitor. The negative part of the AC waveform flows through this diode and charges the lower capacitor. You end up with an output which is two times the AC input peak voltage. The circuit shown here works extremely well and was commonly used in many cathode ray TVs. Like many other voltage doubling or tripling circuits, the voltage will be much higher at the output but the current will be lower. Let's take a look at this circuit connected up on the scope. All right, we now have the full wave circuit connected. Two capacitors are connected together. The center of the two capacitors here ties into one leg of the AC supply. The other leg of the AC supply goes to the center of the two diodes. Each side of the diodes goes to one side of each capacitor. Your DC output, you have your positive and negative. Let's take a look at the scope up close. Just like before, we now have twice the peak AC input voltage. It was 27 before, now we're up to 53.3 positive. And as you can see, an output with very low ripple. Now I'm going to show you some tests with the microwave oven transformer. First I'm going to show you the 2000 to 2500 volt output arcing to the core. And then I'm going to show you the same test with the voltage doubling circuit connected. First I'm going to power up the transformer without the voltage doubling circuit applied to show you the output. Now we'll be connecting up the voltage doubling circuit to boost that output to over 5,000 volts. Okay, we now have the high voltage output going into the capacitor. The other side of the capacitor goes into the anode of the high voltage diode. The cathode goes to the transformer core. We're going to be looking at the spark between the anode and the core. Should be much more intense than you saw earlier. That arcing took place on a gap that's around 3 sixteenths of an inch. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.